There you go, Devin. A reboot of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Man, oh man, I remember when that came out in movie theaters. Oh really? Sport. I remember the TV series as a kid. Well, there was a movie, famous movie back in the late 80s, right around 1990-ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that one. Are you talking about <laughs> April O'Neil? Is that what we're skirting around I think that's here? the one. Yeah. All right, okay. That's the only one that I know of. But yes, that is an age-old thing, my friend, of, okay. All right, let's move on to things that are more recent, which is right now. In our weather here outside the news for Utah Studios, Colonial Flag, little bit of a breeze. If anything, it's found from the north at maybe five miles per hour. Weather ball atop, that's red. The warmer weather is ahead, and it still lasts for a while. I do find that eventually we're going to work a cold front that's not for a while. University of Utah downtown, University of Utah Health Systems downtown cam. There is a little bit of some haze, but not really much. There are a couple of cars starting to get to downtown and for the earliest start to beat the mad rush for the rest of everybody going downtown. Now for the school day plan today forecast from some areas north Salt Lake Valley downtown to Rose Park to University of Utah avenues, upper avenues. It's a chilly start or a cool start mid 50s. Now, central south part of the Salt Lake Valley as you head towards around South Salt Lake to Taylorsville, back over West Valley, south as you head daybreak, back over Cottonwood Heights and Sandy. Temperatures are 60s to 70s. So, big change in temperatures depending even the Salt Lake Valley. Davis Weeper County's 50s and then 60s and 70s in Utah County. So just note that it's a little bit of a cool start. Some are going to need the jacket, but we're all warm this afternoon. About average. It's 81 for the high temperature in Salt Lake is the average. We're at 82 in Salt Lake. Getting out and to and from school or getting to work this morning, no issues on the roads. Just a little bit of a crisp start, fall like start for some. Out for a morning run right now. Look at this downtown. And again, up towards around Avenues, University of Utah, mid 50s, a little milder south. But there isn't much of a breeze. So if you want to get out, it's okay. And even temperatures at mid 50s downtown. Park City is about mid 60s, so it's a little bit milder there. Playgrounds are best morning up till midday. The breezes aren't strong just yet. Temperatures rising 60s to about 70s. To the afternoon, it's warmer, it's breezier. Northwest winds will kick in 10 to 20. Higher gusts. The air quality has been already moderate yellow in Salt Lake. Expected to stay there. Yellow, moderate air quality. Not too bad, not pristine. And the allergies have been something from the way of grass has been up recently. It's back down low, but we've got the weeds that are still moderate, and that's kenopods, ragweed, and sagebrush all coming into the mix. Good morning, Salt Lake City at 56. There is a look at that temperature, but Sandy, Cottonwood Heights, Draper, West Valley, South Jordan, Taylorsville, to name a few. You're the upper 60s. So that's a 12 degree swing between north end of the valley, central and south. Provo's at 65 and 70 in Pleasant Grove and Lehigh 67, so upper 60s to around 70, Utah County. But Davis Weber counties, Tooele County, mid 50s there as well. 61 Park City, Morgan 44. A little cool side for me. I'll take you to mid 50s. Heber, you've been missing your temp. Let's put you at about lower to mid 60s. 46 Logan, that's jackets this morning for you. 50 in Rock Springs and Evanston. Elko and Wells at 53. Same in Ely. 50, 66 in Moab, rather. 71 Lake Powell and St. George. And 61 in Cedar City. The fire danger is still high, in fact, deemed critical. From the Storm Prediction Center's Fire Forecast Office. Southwest Wyoming, most of Utah, parts of Northeast Nevada now is under a red flag warning that includes Ely, who's not under the red flag warning. Malad to Preston, Idaho, and Elko and New Wells in Duck Valley in Northeast Nevada. Couple of clouds that direction. Elko up towards Park Valley in Utah. Maybe Brigham City could find a few of these clouds. That essentially is a cold front swinging in with a system that's really picked up our breeze and it's about the breeze, the warmth, the dry conditions, the high fire threat. Most of the region has a south wind today, but a lake effect wind kicking in Salt Lake Valley, 10 to 20 higher gusts today. It's not shown, but there could be a couple high in the sky clouds seen also north and west zones. Central, southern Utah here today, sunny skies, a little bit breezy. Just be very aware of that fire threat. We won't, don't want to do anything that could spark fires. No smoldering materials. We're flicking out windows. High of only 78 to Logan. Football game tonight looking great. There, Logan, Maverick Stadium. High to Brigham City, 78. 77 to Willis, 75 the high in Park City and Garden City at about 73. Highs to central Utah, upper 70s into the lower to mid 80s. Green River is a warmer spot, 91. St. George, red flag warning and breezy for you. Mid 90s for highs today, sunny skies. Salt Lake City will do right around 80, lower 80s for highs. Breezy conditions here, northwest winds 10, 20, higher gusts. Could find another 90 degree day. Could be near record warmth Saturday, a windy day. But I still don't find any rain over the next week to week and a half. That's Utah's most accurate forecasts on Good Morning Utah. Looks like good football weather to me. Thank you much, Devin. Let's take a look at your morning drive. If you're just headed out the door, this is South Salt Lake, I-15 at 23rd South. 
So far, so good for your morning commute. The time now is 5.50. Coming up, the school in Georgia is offering their students an alternative to suspension. See why it's catching so much attention. Get fully funded online while in the comfort of your home or favorite coffee shop while visiting don'tbebroke.com. They are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. Well, today we're going to see one for ourselves and let you be the judge. It's called Plexiderm, and lifestyle expert Annette Figueroa is here to tell us why she says... This one is for real. This one is for real, and I'm so excited. We even have a video that the viewers can watch while you and I talk. And you'll notice the model has bags underneath his eyes and some sagging. And all he uses is a small amount, and that's how easy it is. All right, what's the active ingredient? Okay, so it's silicates that are minerals found in shale rock. And what it does is it tightens and lifts the appearance of bags underneath your eyes. And as little as 10 minutes, no prescriptions, and very little effort. And I did this to my father. We were at home and we were screaming four minutes, 34 seconds, completely gone. My real true opinion is holy words I can't say on camera. <laughs> These lines bother me. They really do. And this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It feels great. Looks even better. Hi, guys. My name is Sandy Marinese. I'm a professional hair and makeup artist. And one of the number one question that I always get in my chair is, can you make me look younger? So we had a few people that we applied it to. And some of them, at first, I was like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work. And I was so impressed how fast and how well it really worked. Now I could really say to people, yes, I can make you look younger. And not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of crow's feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. So it targets all those problem areas. So this would be a daily thing or just when you want to like get rid of the bags? And yeah, you would it absolutely could be a daily thing. You have high school reunions, you have events you want to go to, you want to look years younger, this is it. Plexiderm has a special offer for you. Right now, you can get Plexiderm for up to 50% off, plus get free shipping. Order yours at Plexiderm.com or call the number on your screen. Shannon Doherty. She's coming back to TV with a movie no one would tell. And this morning, she's on GMA one-on-one -on -one with Robin Roberts in her first live interview since her battle with breast cancer. This morning, Shannon Doherty talks about it all, only on Good Morning America. A Christian charter school in Georgia is taking a whack at an interesting alternative to suspension. And it may feel like we're taking a bit of a time back in, back in time, going back in time here. So... Here's the idea. The school sent a form with students in kindergarten through ninth grade asking for parents' permission to paddle their kids Ooh. if they misbehave. Here's the real kicker. The superintendent said about 100 parents returned the form and about a third of them gave their permission for their kids to get paddled. Now, the report says the kids won't get more than three swats. Um, the question is, like, I, I'm, one of my first questions, is, did every parent agree who wrote in and said, yeah, I agree to this form, actually read what they agreed to? Good point. We'll Good point. Out. And not everybody returned the paper, so a lot of questions there. But that's mm. interesting. Why would they even be considering that? I would think lawsuit, but if they signed a paper, I guess maybe not. I don't know. It's even not. then, I mean, it, what if they gave him really hard smacks, you know, and they had some bruises or something like yeah, that? Yeah, to me, that just spells problem. In this day and age, you know, we're talking about even just parents at home and just regularly not going the spanking route. Yeah. That's a little different one. To me, that's a little much. Mm. Interesting. Okay, teach their own. Mm. Now, how about this? The holiday season just around the corner, and you know how we go to Amazon for everything? Of course. Yes. Well, no need to go down to the local tree lot to get your Christmas tree because Amazon's got you taken care of. They're going big when it comes to selling these Christmas trees. They've got a wide selection of real Christmas trees ranging from two feet to seven feet tall, and apparently some of them will even be eligible for your prime shipping. So you don't have to go, strap it on the car, deal with the pine needles everywhere. It'll be delivered to you, I'm assuming, in a nice, lovely box. I'm not quite Hoping. sure about the details there. Those needles are still getting all over your house, though. They will, exactly. that's true. But at least not on top of your car. That's true. That'd be positive, and, and not in inside the, the car. Yeah. The foundation or the Association of Christmas Trees right here says this is fantastic. They welcome this. <laughs> they just continue to sell the point that real trees are festive. They're better for the environment. They're a better option. And... So that's why everybody's happy about this idea. The only question I have about this is, like, how do you know you're getting a good one? You, you know, like with a Christmas tree, True. the whole point is you have to go down and pick out, is it the right size? Is it the right height? Does it have, is it full enough? Scott, trust Amazon. 
Say when you want five feet, you're gonna get five feet and it'll work. But you don't have any Christmas story moments. You have no, no. You just go open your door and say, hello, here's my tree. Right. We're losing a no, piece of our culture right No lug nuts going everywhere and oh fudges. Okay, I you mean, are. But if you don't have time to go to the Christmas tree lot <laughs> and you need a Christmas tree, there you go. I mean, it's For a very efficient idea. And it's it very kind of, efficient. It's definitely keeping up with the times. Definitely efficient. It's a little lighter in your wallet, though. 120 bucks, 119 all right. Which, because right. you go to Costco and get it for 60 bucks. Those Costco, Costco. treats, and they look pretty good, too. <laughs> that's, that's half the price. Okay, there you go. Let's check out our national days up for our September 13th, 2018. This Thursday, it's national. I like this one. I'm a big fan of this one here today. Uh -huh. National Kids Take Over the Kitchen What's Day. What's Eleanor going to make tonight? I don't know, because a four-year-old and a six-year-old's a little bit rambunctious well, in the be, kitchen. It could be fun. You could have cereal for dinner. It could be like jelly cereal or a cereal with sugar on top. And that would or... be great. Oh, yeah, there's got to be a lot of sugar what involved, whatever they're cooking. All the learning that would be going on during that and the mess. Well, Eleanor did want to help with dinner last night. So okay. We'll see what happens. Now we'll she can do it today. Remember, she was asking, well, also asking about peanuts yesterday. Dad, I'm, I like peanuts. It's National Peanut Day. Okay, have some peanuts. This is former president Jimmy Carter, right? He'd be a big fan of today. Sure. Okay. And finally, it's going to be its National Uncle Sam Day. This goes back to the War of 1812. A meat packer stamped U.S. on meat barrels for meat shipment, and they nicknamed the soldiers did U.S. Uncle Sam. Great. Look at you all this information. Makes sense. All right. Have more on your weather coming up. Watch out. It's windy. It's warm. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Let's take a look at your traffic before we let you go for this hour here. Give you just a shot. Maybe we'll save it. We'll save it. We'll, we'll check next time. We have more uh, breaking here. news coming up. We'll see you later. Hey, um, it's me. We oh, must have lost track of time. I'm not sure how it happened. I was just trying to finish up a few things. Anyway, uh, we're running late again. We're about to hop in the car, so if we speed, we still might be able to make it. We'll be there soon. I'm so sorry. Talk to you later. Love ya. Bye. You know, you pay too much for your glasses. Fault. Ah, don't blame yourself. Just next time, go to America's Best, where two pairs and a free exam are just $69.95. You save on contacts there, too. Huh. I can't believe I missed that. Well, you can't spot them all. You think they sound like birds? I think they sound like birds. America's Best, celebrating 40 years of providing affordable eye care. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Our daughter loves her new Honda, so I'm here to look at the Accord. Excellent. The Accord LX comes standard with a turbocharged engine and our full suite of Honda Sensing safety and driver assist technologies. 2018 North American Car of the Year? Yes. The Accord is voted best in innovation, design, and value. That settles it. I'll take it. You're going to share it, right? Come in to test drive the Honda Accord, the 2018 North American Car of the Year. RCWilly.com. Shop hundreds of furniture styles available for immediate in-store pickup or delivery. Smoking is an addiction that eats away at nearly every vital organ of your body. Your heart, lungs, mouth, throat, teeth, brain. Cigarettes are eating you alive. Quitting is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. You're twice as likely to quit for good with treatment and medication. To find the quit tools that work best for you, visit waytoquit.org. Time now for your pinpoint weather forecast first on News 4 Utah. Good morning, Utah. It's 6 o'clock Thursday morning. Downtown is a fairly clear start, but it's a little cool in some cases, especially north end of the Wasatch Front. Crisp fall light start 54 to Ogden. Downtown's 56. 
south part of the Salt Lake Valley, 60s and 60s, 70s, Utah County. So uh, just beware of the cooler start in some areas. It's a mild day. Temperatures right at average. That's around 80 degrees for the time of the year. But it turns breezy today. Let us know how strong the winds will blow from what direction, how that aids into the fire threat today. And also looking ahead to the weekend, updates on Hurricane Florence as well. All in Utah's most accurate forecast. Six o'clock hour of Good Morning Utah starts right now. One person is killed in a shooting at a West Jordan restaurant. The search now for the suspects. We are live at the scene and. It's a lot of a scary sight and it's, it's not going to be good what's going to be coming. Hurricane Florence has now weakened, but it's still posing a major threat to the East Coast today. We'll show you the current conditions and what could be next. Plus the Pole Creek fire burning at the Utah and UAB County border, forcing new evacuations overnight. We'll tell you where it's all coming up only on GMU. Live from Utah's first TV station, Good Morning Utah at 6 starts now. Good morning, Utah. I'm Brian Carlson. And I'm Emily Clark, 601 here on your Thursday. And breaking overnight, a man is shot and killed inside a restaurant in West Jordan. And now police are looking for the shooter. Yeah, the shots were fired after an argument broke out between those two groups of people at the Rancheritos at 78 South and 17th West. News for Utah's Brittany Johnson is there live in West Jordan. So, Brittany, what do we know? Well, Brian and Emily, we know it all went down behind me here. Police say two men walked into this Rancheritos, approached two other men. There was an argument which led to a fight. Things escalated to a shooting. Now, this is an active investigation. You can see here that police tape is up and it is blocking off access to this entire parking lot and to this Rancheritos right now. Things will stay this way as police work to gather their evidence and go over surveillance video. Video. Now, this did happen at about 1230 this morning. Police say whatever the groups of men were arguing about obviously escalated and police say one of the suspects pulled out a gun and shot the victim multiple times. That suspect and the other man that he was with ran off. That 20 year old man died at the hospital and police right now are looking for two men in their late teens or early 20s, only described by witnesses as a light skinned black man and a Hispanic man. One of them was said to be wearing red shoes and possibly some red clothes. But police do not think that the public has anything to worry about. They say that this was an isolated incident and they do believe that their victim was targeted. If you do have any information as to what happened here last night, police do want to hear from you. They say there were a lot of people inside this Rancheritos eating who may have seen something and they want to hear from you. Call West Jordan Police if you have any information. For now, reporting live in West Jordan this morning, I'm Brittany Johnson, News 4, Utah. Thank you, Brittany. 603 and happening now, Hurricane Florence, described as a monster storm, is slowly closing in on the Mid-Atlantic. The storm has been downgraded to a Category 2 hurricane as it moves inland toward North Carolina. The hurricane is still expected to unleash historic flooding and damaging winds today. Florence is now threatening residents from Georgia to Virginia, forcing more than 1 million people under mandatory evacuation orders. Now, the threat of Hurricane Florence has people right here in Utah worried about their loved ones along the East Coast. Shiloh Johnson's brother and sister-in-law are in North Carolina, about 20 miles from Fayetteville. The family tells us they've gathered enough food and water for a week and plan to ride out the storm. While they may be ready, their family back here in Utah say they wish they could help. You worry that, you know, that something bad's going to happen. They're not going to have electricity. Their house is going to get flooded. <laughs> I mean, there's just like a myriad of scenarios that just go flying through your head. Now, that's not the end of Johnson's connection to Hurricane Florence. She has a friend in Virginia who's also there in the path of the hurricane. And we will have complete coverage on Hurricane Florence throughout the day as the storm does make landfall, including a live look from North Carolina coming up this hour of GMU. Stay with us here on air on News for Utah and, of course, always online at goodforutah.com. In your fire tracker, the Pole Creek Fire burning in the Nebo Loop area is now forcing people to evacuate. Those evacuations are for any homes in the area of Nebel Creek Road to Highway 89. Now, part of Highway 89, just south of the city of Birdseye, is closed. The fire is burning along the Utah Juab County border and now covers 1,500 acres. Gusty winds and dry conditions are expected to help that fire grow over the next few days. 
It's believed lightning started this fire. Meanwhile, people evacuated from a fire in Harriman are now back home. Yesterday, a field fire threatened dozens of their homes. Some 30 homes were evacuated in Rose Canyon. Those evacuations were lifted the last night. The fire shut down Rose Canyon Road just west of 7500 West. We were there as helicopters dropped water to keep the flames away. Wow, that shouldn't that fire should not be happening. And it went up fast, really fast. Now you heard from people who were uh, affected by that fire about five outbuildings burned in those flames. But thankfully, no homes were destroyed. No cause has been named for this fire, but investigators believe it was likely human caused. 605 and Geneva Rock's proposal to expand their gravel pit in Draper will not move forward, at least not for now. Geneva Rock wanted to rezone 73 acres. City Council member tells News for Utah that the company changed their application to zone just 18 acres. That council member says Geneva Rock probably withdrew their proposal because they knew that it wouldn't pass. We need to make sure as a city council member that first, Geneva is forefront in what they're trying to do. And second, that we make sure that our residents and the air quality of Draper is protected. Councilwoman Michelle Weeks says Geneva could not prove the rezoning was safe for the community's health. If the proposal was denied, Geneva would have to wait at least a year to reapply. 606 and the man who shot and killed a University of Utah student is heading to prison for the rest of his life. Yesterday, Austin Boutain pled guilty to murdering Chen Wegua. He also admitted to the attempted murder of a woman who was with the victim the night of the ordeal. Last October, Boutain tried to carjack Gua near the hiking trails just north of Rebu Gardens, killing the victim and shooting that woman who was able to get away. In exchange for the guilty pleas, Boutain was spared a possible death sentence, but will not have a chance of parole. Prior to sentencing, Boutain did apologize to his victims. Yes, sir, I just want to say to the family and to the victims that I know sorry doesn't mean much, but uh, I am truly sorry. His wife, Kathleen Boutain, you see here, was also charged with lesser crimes associated to the shooting. She's due in court later this fall. Boutain is not done facing judgment, however. He will soon be transferred to Colorado, where he faces additional murder charges. In your local election headquarters, we're now just 55 days away from the midterm elections in November. And voter turnout is expected to be higher than normal. But a major problem in Utah is still getting people to the polls. In 2016, around 57% of eligible voters only took part in the election. Lawmakers have made several new rules to make it easier to cast a ballot. But political experts say it's difficult for people who think their vote won't matter. We can make a difference, but I'll tell you, you have... A huge number of people deciding that either they don't care or they can't make a difference or they're just too unhappy. That's when we lose everything that we care about. So be sure to join us today for our in focus look inside Utah politics. All day we'll be looking at the major issues and candidates on the ballot and analyze what's keeping voters from casting their ballot. 608, a health alert for you now. The Food and Drug Administration cracking down on e-cigarettes, putting some companies on notice. The reason? The epidemic spreading among middle and high school students. The FDA sent out 1,100 warning letters and issued 131 fines to stores for illegally selling e-cigarettes to minors. The FDA also gave five e-cig companies 60 days to lay out their plan to keep these enticing products out of the hands of kids. Here in Utah, our numbers have pretty much doubled in the last seven years. I usually got them from friends that were older. The FDA will also have boots on the ground inspecting the marketing and sales practices of these products. The e -cig company Jewel did release a statement saying that they are committed to preventing underage use of its products and they want to be part of the solution. Dixie State University has a big reason to celebrate. Dixie was just ranked by U.S. News as one of the best colleges in the nation. Dixie State ranked 26th in the regional colleges in the West category. The study took 1,800 accredited schools and divided them into 10 categories. BYU ranked 11th in best value universities, and the University of Utah was ranked 119th among national universities. And Utah Governor Gary Herber is making a plea to retired teachers. Come back to the classroom. Now he hopes they can help address Utah's teacher shortage. Almost half of Utah teachers stay in the profession for only five years. Yesterday, the governor and Envision Utah made their plea for teachers to come out of retirement. The governor says moving forward, legislation and research will be aimed at recruiting talented teachers. See, if we take care of the teachers, the teachers are going to take care of our kids. And it's a supply and demand. We have a, 
a limited supply of teachers and a high demand right now for classroom, so their salaries are going to go up, and we need to find a way to pay them. Now, Governor Herbert says the clear way to accomplish higher salaries in Utah this year is to vote yes on ballot question number one in November. To find out more about that initiative, just head to our website, goodforutah.com. 610 coming up. A domestic violence situation in California leads to a mass shooting yesterday. How the tragic turn of events unfolded. And while Hurricane Florence threatens states on the East Coast here of the U.S., an even bigger storm is approaching islands in Southeast Asia, where Typhoon Mancut is headed and who is at risk. Back in Utah, University of Utah Health System's downtown camera. We'd be able to get that daylight to show. It's not too bad of a start, but it is cooler in some areas, especially downtown. We're, we're into the 50s and farther north, Davis to Weaver counties, but Utah County and even parts of Salt Lake Valley, central and south, milder, 60s to around 70. So do note, we've got some crisp fall-like temperatures to an even 46 in Tooele, Stansbury Park in Erda. Grab a jacket before heading out. Does work outside today. That's actually not too bad for those morning hours, milder. We're only up to 75 in Salt Lake at noon. We're topping out to around close to average the time of the year. That's 81 in Salt Lake. We'll go 82. Weather balls red. The warmer weather's still ahead. I'll let you know for how long, but the breeze is expected to increase. Let you know how strong that blows, what it does to your fire danger. And we'll look ahead to your weekend in Utah's most accurate forecast. Okay, Devin, thank you so much. Now to our traffic, I-80, 13 the West here in Salt Lake City. Things looking pretty good. No issues so far on your Friday Eve. We'll be back right after this. through the fire. So can you. All new The Doctors today at 3 on ABC4 Utah. I don't know. I feel like there's something missing. I know what it is. You're missing a better car buying experience. Right now, save up to 28% off MSRP on a new in-stock 2018 Kia at Jerry Signer Kia Salt Lake. Come experience the signer difference. Now's the perfect time to save on a beautiful new floor. Hurry into Carpet One's National Tigressa Sales Event. For the first time ever, get 60 months special financing on a great selection of floors. That's five years. Save on hardwood, luxury vinyl, tile, and carpet, including super soft and stylish Tigressa carpets. The softer, stronger carpet. Don't miss our limited time 60 month special financing offer. Giant Carpet One, the one store for your perfect hardwood, carpet, laminate, vinyl, or tile floor. At Toyota, safety isn't an option. It's standard, so features like lane departure alert and pre-collision system are always included on every single Toyota RAV4 standard. We loaded RAV4 with advanced safety features to help keep you protected during all your adventures. Right now, get 0% APR financing for 60 months on a new 2018 RAV4 or get $3,000 cash back on RAV4. Find your Toyota at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. The News for Utah Pinpoint Weather Team. Utah's most accurate seven years in a row. Get fully funded online while in the comfort of your home or favorite coffee shop while visiting Don'tBeBroke.com. Good morning, Utah. Weekday mornings at 4.30. Breaking overnight, police in California are investigating a mass shooting. Authorities say the gunman is dead, but not before he killed several people. Authorities in Bakersfield say trouble started shortly after a man and his wife arrived at a trucking business. They were in the middle of a domestic dispute. The suspect shot and killed a man in that business and then killed his wife. The sheriff says that's when another person came on scene and the gunman chased them down and killed them too. He then went into a nearby home where he allegedly killed two more people before taking his own life. Authorities are now looking at multiple shooting scenes and interviewing dozens of witnesses. I'm pretty comfortable there will be a connection between all of these players. Now the officer on scene when the gunman killed himself was wearing a body camera and that video is currently being examined. 
With over 30 witnesses to interview, authorities say the investigation could take days. And happening now, while the U.S. braces for Hurricane Florence, an even stronger super typhoon is in the Pacific taking aim at the northern Philippines. Right now, those people are preparing for winds gusting of over 200 miles per hour and a massive rain band over 500 miles wide. Super Typhoon Mancut is expected to hit the island of Luzon before moving on to Hong Kong and then southern China. Mancut has already torn through Guam, where it caused widespread damage, flooding, and power outages. Okay, I'm here with meteorologist Devin Lucy. And Devin, let's talk Typhoon, Hurricane, big storms. What's yeah. the difference? Just the names, just okay. the location of where they are. It's the exact same thing. And Mark behind the scenes here was posing the same question earlier. So a lot of people think, well, it's a typhoon, super typhoon, hurricane. It's the same storm. It's the exact same thing. It's just where it's located. We call them typhoons. I think super typhoon is like a category five hurricane. Wow. Okay, yeah, so situ serious situation Huge. happening there. What's the latest now with Florence? Yeah, that's the serious situation off the East Coast. The first outer bands starting to make some landfall. As we'll see here, Hurricane Florence actually is down to a Category 2. That is good news. So maybe as earlier projections had this as a Category 4. Maybe the good thing here is the winds may not be as strong. We're not out of any threat just yet. We've still got storm surges. We've still got flooding threats and torrential rainfall. So take a look at the latest for the track for Hurricane Florence to make landfall as we get into the next 24 to 48 hours here. As we get into Friday here, tomorrow, we expect landfall. And right just north, right around Wilmington, is expected to stay a Category 2, so that's the good news. Earlier projections, even as soon as yesterday, were still Category 4 status. Category 2, the latest stats are maximum sustained winds, a one-minute average at 110, higher gusts. But this thing to make landfall right in North Carolina. But as shown yesterday, too, a change in the direction of this instead of heading up the coast or heading inland, and that would be northward or westward, could be a south track that turns this into South Carolina. Now also watch this system becoming and staying at least tropical storm status well inland and then dropping tons of rain, possibly down the tracks could take it into Georgia and then back up, up towards mid-south and in towards around upper Midwest, if you will, and eastern parts thereof, Kentucky to West Virginia, Tennessee could be in that mix. This thing is far from over here. It's going to drop a lot of rainfall even as it makes its way inland. Storm surge to the Outer Banks in North Carolina. We'll have to watch it very closely, but expecting landfall within the next day, within the next 24 hours. Calmer here than Utah weather pattern. And news for Utah Studios Colonial Flag. The breeze has just picked up from the north at about 10 miles per hour. You can see the weather balls red. Warmer weather's ahead. But it's a cooler start in some parts of the Salt Lake Valley north. So downtown, Upper Avenues, Avenues, Rose Park. University of Utah, to name a few. You are crisp this morning, almost fall like to 50s. Now, as you head farther south in the Salt Lake Valley, South Salt Lake, Draper to even Sandy, you're milder. Cottonwood Heights back over West Valley, even towards around Kearns, even farther south towards Taylorsville, I already mentioned, or maybe daybreak, it's 60s to around 70. So those north zones for the school day plan today forecast, maybe it's a jacket you need to scrape out for the kids and get ready to go. And then maybe short sleeves this afternoon. Getting the kids to school, getting to work on the road, there's no concern here today. It's just going to be maybe a bit of a breeze, a cooler start. Out for a run right now, we've got some 50s north end Salt Lake Valley, but the breeze has increased to northwest winds at 10. Golf forecast, teed up by Golf Mesquite, Nevada. Milder morning to be out, but it could be the breeze that plays into the short game today. Temperature-wise, not too bad, topping out about 82. But watching for breezy conditions to stick around in the forecast all the way to the weekend in towards next week as well. But I do not find any rain chances tonight. Logan rocking and rolling at Cache Valley and Maverick Stadium. It's going to be the home game. Tennessee Tech in temperatures from around 74 to start, dropping into the 60s tonight. Air quality, not too much of a concern. Not pristine, but it could be yellow to moderate later today. Allergies, the weeds are still up to a moderate category. That's kinopods, even sagebrush and ragweed kicking in. 56 Salt Lake. 54 Ogden, but 70 Pleasant Grove and 63 to Provo. So do note those temperatures a little bit cooler north end Salt Lake Valley to Willis to 40s this morning. And so is Logan. Grab your jacket before heading out. Throck Springs in Evanston, 49, 59 in Cedar City and 72 into St. George. The fire threat is also high today. Northwest winds in the Salt Lake Valley, 10 to 20 higher gusts. Red flag warning just means be very aware of any fire danger. If you got a fire that's around, it could blow up quickly. 
Southwest Wyoming and Ely is also a red flag warning. High res pinpoint future cast forecast uh, is going to show that we got a couple of clouds north and west zones, but that's about it. We just don't find anything but the breezy, warm conditions, the increased and in critical fire threat as it's deemed from the Storm Prediction Center's fire forecast office. Again, there's just nothing to show here on the Wasatch Front. Clear and calm. Central Southern Utah, again, clear and calm. At least in the way of any weather, the breezes will be up. And again, the heightened fire threat. The temperature-wise, it's not too bad. Everybody across the region, some cooler zones to upper 70s for highs like Logan. 80s for highs to Vernal, Duchesne, Roosevelt. You went to Basin 85. Moab 94, a hotter day to hike arches and canyon lands. 84 in Cedar City, 75 Delta, but 94 breezy St. George. You got right temperatures right around mid 90s in the breeze into the weekend and beyond. Salt Lake City, right around 80, if not lower 80s. Breezy today, high fire danger. Watch the winds even ramp up further Friday, Saturday. Windy, might that be the last 90 degree day on Saturday? We'll watch, but I don't find any rain over the next week to maybe even week and a half. And still staying above average temperatures beyond today in Utah's most accurate forecast on Good Morning Utah. We'll take it. Thank you, Devin. Let's take a look at your morning drive. You just headed out the door. Say good morning to Midvale. I-15, 66 South. As you can see, traffic is starting to pick up here this morning, but no major slowdowns, Emily. Thank you. 621 coming up. Apple announcing its newest iPhones, including the most expensive iPhone ever. How much this new version will cost you? Coming up in your Good Morning Utah business report. And it might not seem like it yet, but holiday shopping season is right around the corner. Salt Lake City's Holiday Craft Market is looking for artists and venues. The Arts Council joins us after the break with how you can get involved. But first, here's your first look at Good Morning America. In this morning's GMA First Look, the father of the woman who was attacked by a giraffe, along with her three-year-old son, is speaking out. Jack Standish says his daughter Katie, a wildlife scientist, was walking with her three-year-old son Finn not far from their home in a South African nature preserve. This time she came through a wooded section, went into a clearing, and instantly the giraffe came at them. Her husband, running in at the end of the attack, was able to call for help. They were airlifted to a hospital nearby. Katie has woken from her coma, and as for Finn, he's just coming out of his medically induced coma, still groggy, but making tremendous strides. And we'll have much more of the giraffe attack coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Paula Ferris, ABC News, New York. through the 16th. It's going to be gnarly, dude. It's a September to remember at Murdoch Hyundai. We're running out of 2018s and Hyundai's never had bigger incentives. What? What, Dad? That's good, just not good enough. If we want this to be a September to remember, we have to give our guests an unforgettable offer. What if our customers don't have to make payments until 2019 on any car? Do you remember September to remember. Only at Murdoch Hyundai in Logan, Lyndon, and Murray. You've got to come and see us. After you're hurt, don't let the insurance company decide for you how the rest of your life will be lived. Protect yourself. We hold insurance companies accountable to treat people fairly. Don't go it alone. 
Call Siegfried and Jensen. Every morning, McDonald's is cracking it, cooking it, grilling it, wrapping it. Get a delicious, savory sausage burrito for just $1 and add any size Hot McCafe drip coffee for just a dollar more. You're watching Good Morning Utah. Welcome back. I realize it's nearly 90 degrees out there today and getting warmer throughout the week, but it is time to talk about the 35th anniversary of Salt Lake City's holiday craft market. The market features work of a variety of Utah artists and vendors. So here to tell us all about it and how you can participate. Now is the time. Kelsey Ellis is here with the Salt Lake City Arts Council. Good morning. Hi. Let's talk about this market first for people who might not know about it. Sure. A really special part of the holiday season here in Salt Lake City. Yeah, our Finch Lane Gallery every year does this great holiday market. Um, what's great is that we have it that starts November 30th, but it goes all the way through December 19th, which okay. is something that some of the other markets don't do. Uh, most of them are like a weekend long. Mm -hmm. um, you can find a great variety of different things. We have um, art glass, we have textiles, great place to get jewelry. Um, ceramics is also really great there. Fine art, just really a unique offering. Of Artwork. So with our summer mind, we think of the downtown farmers market, the artisan vendors, kind of mm -hmm. like that, but on a bigger scale. Yeah, and some of the artists that participate at our market also participate at the downtown farmers market. So you might see some of those um, offerings in the off season. Now let's talk about how this is so important to support our local arts community. This is a way to kind of make votes of their greatness by simply spending some of our money. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> That's one of the great things about um, our market is you have to be a Utah resident um, in order to participate. So we really want to invest in our local arts community and see them be successful. Okay, so let's explain to people why we're talking about this right now. We're not trying to get you into the holiday spirit. We want you to, to know that right now, if you want to be a vendor, it's the time to sign up and get yourself inside the uh, gallery. Yes, absolutely. So a little different this year from previous years. Um, so that's an awareness for artists who have participated with us before. Mm -hmm. um, we're asking all artists new to the market or a seasoned veteran um, to fill out an interest form. Um, that interest form is on our website at saltlakearts.org. Really, we're just collecting all of that information up front. So um, tell us about yourself, tell us about your artwork and your craft, um, provide some images of it. Um, as I said, if you have participated in the past, uh, you really can anticipate returning this year. If you are new to the market, um, we'll look it over your work and um, really the staff will review it to ensure it's a good fit for our market. Make sure it's a good fit, but also get some new vendors who maybe haven't yes. been there already. Yes. This is just such a great opportunity for them to get some exposure and be part of the holiday season and let us all celebrate by spending our money locally. What's your favorite thing about the market? I'm sure you bought a couple presents there in the past. Every year I find something new new. Um, jewelry is amazing there. Um, I also always buy some ceramics, great gift bowls, as well as my um, bowls for all of my parties when I have them, but also um, good ornaments and holiday um, decorations. So every year I find something new. Find something new, something special, while also supporting our local economy, which is Absolutely. so fantastic. So if you want to express some interest in the holiday craft market, we're going to have a link to the city's website right there. So like City Arts Council, you can find that on our website, goodforutah.com forward slash GMU. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Christmas is a, it's a little too early to talk about it, Brian, but we'll get people excited, even though it's still just September. You read my mind, Emily. All right, the time now is 628. Here's what we're working on for Good Morning Utah at 630. The 2018 midterm election is just months away. And before you hit the polls, it's important to know what's on the ballot. So coming up on GMU, we're talking Medicaid expansion and how it could potentially close the coverage gap. Plus, Americans are making more money. Income rates are up once again, but it may come with a catch. Find out how in your Good Morning Utah business report. Let's take a live look at St. George here this morning. This is from our Southern Utah University camera network. You've seen that shot before, waiting for the sun to come up there in Utah's Dixie. Devin Lucy has your forecast first, right after this. Good morning, Utah. Good morning, America. Get your day started right with us. Get fully funded online while in the comfort of your home or favorite coffee shop while visiting don'tbebroke.com. Now is the time to get the body you've always wanted at Sonobello, America's number one cosmetic surgery specialist. To celebrate our 10th anniversary for the first time ever, we're offering you exclusive access to our employee-only pricing. Before at Sonobello, this is what I used to look like. This is what I look like now. It's hard sometimes to believe that's me. Is that my body? Wow, cool. 
Using advanced microlaser technology, Sonabello's board-certified plastic surgeons can remove unwanted fat in as little as one day with minimal downtime. Even stubborn areas like stomach, thighs, and love handles. Call 888-450-8684. Now, for a free consultation and take advantage of our 10th anniversary exclusive employee-only pricing. Payment plans available. Don't miss out on your chance to take advantage of employee-only pricing from Sonobello. This is a limited time offer. Call 888-450-8684. Now. Why would someone with so much choose to leave it all behind? This doesn't add up. Maybe John's death is a wake-up call. Here comes the rest of the To John. To John. A Million Little Things. A new drama, September 26th on ABC. Time now for your pinpoint weather forecast first on News 4 Utah. Good morning, Utah. 6.30 here Thursday morning, and we're starting to find some daylight getting into the Salt Lake Valley. The University of Utah Healthcare System downtown Cam doesn't show it's a cooler start there at 56. Farther north in the Wasatch Front, Davis Weber County is the 50s. But then farther south, Utah County, we've got 60 degree readings to 68 in Pleasant Grove, even south end of the Salt Lake Valley with some 60s as well. So be prepared. Could be a bit of a chill if you head out, grab a jacket. It's going to be about an average day. 81 is that in Salt Lake will be to 82. The breezes tick up today, let you know how strong, how that plays into the fire threat. Also, a look ahead to your weekend. Utah's most accurate forecast, the 630 edition of Good Morning Utah. It starts right now. 15, 44 South. Things looking pretty good on this uh, section of the I-15. Live from Utah's first TV station, Good Morning Utah at 630 starts now. Okay, back to that traffic camera, everybody. Here we go. Things looking good in Murray. Looking nice north and southbound so far. No major issues for your drive today. And here are the top four stories we're following for your Thursday morning. A man is shot and killed inside a restaurant in West Jordan. And right now, police are looking for the shooter. The shots were fired after an argument broke out between two groups of people at the Ranch Rito's at 78 South and 17th West. The victim is 20 years old. Witnesses describe the suspects as two black and white men in their mid-20s. If you know anything, call police. The Pole Creek Fire burning in the Nebo Loop area is now forcing people to evacuate. Those evacuations are for any homes in the area of Nebo Creek Road to up to Highway 89. The fire is burning along the Utah Juab County border and now covers 1,500 acres. Part of Highway 89 just south of the city of Birdseye is closed. Gusty winds and dry conditions are expected to help this lightning cause fire to grow over the next few days. Meanwhile, people evacuated from a fire in Harriman are now back home. Yesterday, a field fire threatened dozens of their homes. Some 30 homes were evacuated in Rose Canyon. Those evacuations were lifted last night. The fire burned roughly five outbuildings. Fortunately, no homes were destroyed. The cause has been named. No cause has been named for the fire, but fire investigators say it was likely human caused. And Geneva Rock is now pulling its proposal to expand their gravel pit in Draper. The plan was facing criticism from clean air advocates over the fear of pollution. While the company says the expansion would be good for the environment, the Draper Council says they can't prove that rezoning was safe for the community. Geneva Rock says it will return to the city with a more scaled down expansion plan. And we'll have more on the four we're following coming up in about 10 minutes. Right now it's 6.33, an update in household income may come with a catch. Apple releases a new line of iPhones and a massive recall for one of America's largest automakers. It's all in your Good Morning Utah Business Report. More Americans have more to spend. The median income for a household in the United States is up for a third straight year, rising nearly 2% to just over $61,000. A new census report says the poverty rate also fell to 12.3%, but the report points out that adjusted for inflation, income is essentially the same as 2007, just before the recession hit. And some of that money may soon be going to Apple. The company introduced three new iPhone models yesterday, including its most expensive ever, the iPhone XS Max, costing just about $1,100. Plus, GM is recalling nearly a quarter million cars and SUVs over brake problems. The company says there is hydrogen gas trapped in the rear brakes that could make them feel soft and increase the risk of a crash. The recall covers 10 models, including cars like the Chevy Cruze, Volt, and Impala, and the Cadillac XT. Yes.
And Hershey is going a little salty. The company is buying the Pirate's Booty brand of snacks from B&G Foods. That gives the chocolate maker rights over snacks like Pirate's Booty, Smart Puffs, and Original Tings. The deal is worth $420 million. And that's your Good Morning Utah Business Report. That's a sweet deal. All right, the time now is 6.34. Coming up, there are a number of highly debated topics on the ballot this November. So before you head to the polls, know what you're voting for. We're talking election 2018, including Medicaid expansion and how it could affect you. That's after the break. And still ahead, the outer bands of Hurricane Florence have started to make landfall overnight on the East Coast. We'll have a report from North Carolina where they're starting to see some of those effects. As we head to the break, here's a live look outside from our neck of the woods right here, downtown Salt Lake City, from our University of Utah Healthcare Camera Network. A beautiful blue sky out there this morning, still waking up here on a Thursday. We have your full port wind pinpoint weather forecast right after this. Football is my dream. I want a better life. Play for me. Beverly Hills, huh? This is your way out. Today on Good Things Utah, don't let your body language sink your job interview. Learn how to exude confidence and land your dream job. And for anti-aging foods to add to your diet, you're going to want to do it today. We'll see you then. It's a September to remember at Murdoch Hyundai. We're running out of 2018s and Hyundai's never had bigger incentives. What? What, Dad? That's good, just not good enough. If we want this to be a September to remember, we have to give our guests an unforgettable offer. What if our customers don't have to make payments until 2019 on any car? Do you remember Murdoch's huge sales? Now September. that's a September to remember. Only at Murdoch Hyundai in Logan, Lyndon, and Murray. You've got to come and see us. What's going on in Washington makes you feel dirty. With all the special interest money and corruption, we need to clean it up and put people ahead of party. I'll introduce legislation to curb the power of special interests, require Congress to pass a budget or not get paid, and never vote to raise congressional pay. And I don't support Nancy Pelosi for speaker. Honey, the kids need the shower. I'm Ben McAdams, and I approve this message. Don't look good. Yeah, it looks like it's both. Just what I don't need. This is what you do need. Complete the application within minutes. And if approved, you may get the money you need as soon as tomorrow. Money's on the way with CashNet USA. It's not surprising that the most memorable memorials are the ones we plan ourselves. After all, who knows you better than you? Get a plan together and let us take care of the details. It's what we're known for. Find out how at DignitySaltLake.com. Only a Dignity Memorial professional can celebrate a life like no other. I don't know. I feel like there's something missing. I know what it is. You're missing a better car buying experience. Right now, save up to 28% off MSRP on a new in-stock 2018 Kia at Jerry Signer Kia in South Jordan. Come experience the Signer difference. For Utah Pinpoint Weather Team, Utah's most accurate seven years in a row. Time now for Utah's most accurate forecast with Devin Lucy, Weather Rate Certified, seven years in a row. Right, time to talk to weather here this morning. I'm here with Devin Lucy, mm -hmm. and we're really concerned about Hurricane Florence you know, as it's making landfall there this morning. But I'm watching as you're reporting that it's now down to a category two. Now, that's it's some of the best news that we can have. I mean, this is still means no, nobody's out in the clear just yet. And we're still under the gun, still have a big threat posed. But good news is this thing is considerably decreased from a four to two. So, so how much of a difference does that make for people who are now feeling the effects of that on the, on the Carolina coast? Well, it could be in the way of the effects of the strong wind damage that could come with a hurricane, the hurricane force winds that extend out farther from the center of it and are even stronger that we take that at least wind threat down. 
However, there's still the threat from storm surge, the heavy rain that's still there, and it's really the storm surge and the flooding that's the biggest. So there's some good news, but nowhere near that it's to say everything's looking much better. 639, good morning, Utah, but we first start with Florence and the updates. The Category 2 status, and you see the winds, maximum sustained winds, 110 miles per hour. What that means, that's a wind that's been averaged over one minute. And we take several different readings from hurricane hunters. And then we take that maximum amount of the wind. So the winds may not be 110 miles per hour all the time. And usually that's very close to the eyewall center. And the wind gusts are going to be higher than that. But the outer bands just making into landfall in North Carolina up to Virginia. So the latest is category two status as it makes landfall as we're getting in towards around at least maybe even tonight, even towards early tomorrow over the next 24 hours. But this thing as it goes inland through North Carolina is still expected to be category one status. Those maximum sustained winds we described at 80 miles per hour. The going forecasts right now and still the forecasts are all over the board as this thing gets inland. So we could be looking that it takes a sharp southeast or, or southwesterly turn and could travel as far southwest as maybe even into Georgia before backup it catches the flow of the jet stream and the more steering winds west to east and goes north then back up towards around mid-south Tennessee and towards maybe even edging into the Midwest eastern zones. So this will be a heavy rain producer. Wilmington really is kind of the central part of where everybody is expected to see landfall maybe just north and east so we will keep a close watch what's going on with Florence. This is just the beginning of what's to come. Back Utah Way, Southern Utah University Camera Network in St. George. Clear start to it, sunny start to it. At least we'll see that sunshine before too long. University of Utah Health Systems downtown Cam. Got a clear start to the day here, but a couple clouds could come north. Now, a weak front kind of edged into the region, a cool front, cold front, and it's brought in some cooler air downtown, even towards avenues, upper avenues, Rose Park to name a few, and then as you head farther north into Davis and Weber counties, even to Willa, it's a crisp fall-like start, but even as you head through the Salt Lake Valley farther south, temperatures are still milder, so be aware you might need a jacket for some this morning headed to school, but I believe everybody's back up to short sleeves weather this afternoon as 82 is the expected high. Out on the morning roads here, no worries. You're able to get the kids to school or you're able to get to work just fine. Biking forecast, if you jump on the bike downtown, it's cooler 56 and a bit of a north wind is kicked in at 10 miles per hour. Temperatures will eventually rise pretty fast once we realize that sunshine. Golf forecast teed up by Golf Mesquite, Nevada. Milder temperatures morning and not that windier, but breezier by middle part of the day to the afternoon. Could be the winds and the breezy conditions. That's the only thing you'll need to keep an eye on if you want to be golfing over the next week and a half. Tonight, Logan, Utah State University at Maverick Stadium. 74 kickoff temperatures dropping to the 60s. Taking on Tennessee Tech should be a great night for football. Air quality is just about moderate. Salt Lake expected to stay to yellow moderate air. Allergies are still up. We'll say it's moderate now category from the weeds with kinopods, ragweed, and sagebrush, the main few. There's 56 in Salt Lake, but now 64 in San farther south in Utah County 60s but there's the 54 Ogden and a 46 Tooele so do note you've got a bit of a chill the same to be said Logan at 44 some are going to need those jackets before heading out north and east north and west zones farther south through the Beehive State milder starts 59 Cedar City to 72 in St. George now the fire threat the winds expected to pick up a, a north wind behind that front 10 to 20 in Salt Lake south winds out ahead of the weak front so still red flag warnings continue for almost every Everybody in the Beehive State, Northeast Nevada's Elko, and then Southern Nevada or Southern Idaho, you're out of the red flag warnings today. We've got a couple of clouds up just behind that effective cold front with the storm system that really has increased the winds as it edges into the weekend. Out ahead of that, watch out for that breeze and just be aware the fire threat could fan flames to any fire that starts and go quickly as we've reported on a fire that blew up yesterday. Nothing here in the Wasatch Front today could keep some clouds north and west zones. Park Valley, Tooele, Wendover may see a few, Brigham City, nothing in central and southern Utah here today. But temperatures even ahead of that weak front, not too bad. 78 for the high in Logan today, 84 in Price, 94 for the high in Moab, 85 Vernal, some 70s for southwest Wyoming, Rock Springs, 78, 84 for the high Cedar City's a bit warm. St. George not that hot, 
Red flag warning for you in 94 today, mid 90s through the weekend next week. Salt Lake City, a bit of a breeze today, but close to average. Average is 81, 82 for the high. Watch for that breezier conditions, northwest winds to pick up later. To the weekend, could that be the last 90 degree day on Saturday? It could. Windy, hot, 92 for the high. And then back to mid to upper 80s through the weekend, the rest of the weekend in towards next week. Utah's most accurate forecast here on Good Morning Utah. All right, thank you, Devin. Let's take a look at your morning drive. If you just headed out the door this morning, the sun's making the shot a little difficult to see, but this is I-80 at 7th East in Salt Lake City. Traffic is relatively light so far this morning. 644 and in focus all day, we are going inside Utah politics. Here on News for Utah, we are breaking down some of the key issues you will see on the ballot. Chief political correspondent Glenn Mills begins this morning with a look at Proposition 3, Medicaid expansion. This is a battle that has been going on for years up at the state capitol, and in a few weeks, you, the voter, will settle it. Riley Curtis is with Utah Designs Healthcare Group supporting the initiative. Riley, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. You bet. Proposition uh, 3, Medicaid expansion. Let's just start with the basics. What exactly would it do? Yeah, so Proposition 3 is a traditional Medicaid expansion, and it will expand health care coverage to 150,000 Utahns, earning less than $17,000 a year for an individual, or earning less than $34,000 a year for a family of four. Okay, so as we look at it right now, we have a coverage gap in our state. So explain what it would go up to in not only covering that gap, but even going beyond. Yeah, so these are individuals oftentimes who are working one or more jobs, um, specifically to parents. Uh, they, we do have Medicaid that's offered to them if they're extremely low income, but if they go above that income threshold, then they are dropped off coverage completely. So in our state, they don't qualify for Medicaid because they actually earn too much money, and they don't earn enough money to, uh, for help on the marketplace. So our bill would go all the way up to 138% of the poverty level, making sure that these families and these individuals have uh, health care coverage that they need. So basically enacting what was set under under the Affordable Care Act before the Supreme Court got involved and we saw this coverage gap come. That's right. So when the Supreme Court uh, ruled on Medicaid expansion, they made it optional for states. But what they didn't make optional for states was the amount of taxes we had to pay. So we've been paying into this program for five, five, six years now, and we haven't been getting all that money back because we have chosen as a state not to expand coverage. Okay, this uh, proposition though would come with the tax increase. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about that and how much it would be. Absolutely. So the state has to come up with 10% of the funds to cover the cost of this program. We do that in Proposition 3 through a sales tax increase on non-food items of 0.15%. What that means is one cent on a movie ticket, right? So one cent on a $10 purchase, and that uh, communal, communal distribution makes sure that um, 150,000 Utahns get access to health care. How much would that raise? $90 million. Dollars. Okay, $90 million. Mm -hmm. And that, you say, would cover any of the woodwork effect as yes. far as maybe, you know, more more people coming in than were anticipated and expanding the roles for Medicaid. That's right. So it's estimated 22,500 children who are currently eligible for Medicaid right now will be brought along to the program once their parents find out or have new access to coverage through Medicaid expansion. Okay, one question for you. This has been a heated battle up at the state capitol for a long time now. There's no organized opposition to this. Why do you think that is? You know, to me, it's one of those where it's been asked and answered. We've had this conversation for the last five years at the Capitol, at the legislature, uh, having this conversation. And, and Utahns have been on our side with this since 2014. Any poll that you look back at, we've always been at about two-thirds of Utahns supporting this. And so we're really excited going into November to see that again. Okay, we have about 30 seconds left. One last question for you. The state approved a plan in this year's legislative session that will increase the uh, coverage up to 100% of the federal poverty level. So basically cover that gap. Mm -hmm. Why not go that route instead of the proposition? Because we're not asking for permission from the federal government. We as Utahns get to decide what we want to see happen and it has to happen. What the legislature passed is, is waiting for federal approval. It's been waiting for months now and who knows how long it's going to take. And these Utahns have already been waiting for five years. We need to make sure they get the access to health care coverage they need. And where can our viewers find more out about Proposition 3? They can visit our website, www www.utahdecides.org. Okay, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Uh, we're glad to have you with us this thank morning. Thank you. Back to you. Okay, Glenn, thank you very much. Utah politics will be in focus all day here on News for Utah. Coming up at 9 o'clock on Good Things Utah, we will continue the conversation. So make sure you join us then. Have